Rika. My name is Eurosol, that's my screen name, and I run a website called Eureka.org, which is a social network based on Elk. Um, and the main focus of my site is to help facilitate healing um, collectively and individually, and also to promote balance uh, and evolution in uh, consciousness and the planet in general. Um, so my background is varied. Uh, I have studied computing at university and worked for various companies, uh, banking companies, media companies. Um, I also make music and I'm a sound engineer and a graphic artist and I write as well. So I've learned a lot in my life with regards to balance and I've seen um, how we can bring balance to different areas of life which maybe some people haven't seen. Um, and a lot of it can be applied to software and particularly social networks. So I thought it would be a good idea to talk to you about that today. So I'm going to start off by defining what balance is. Um, we all have a definition of balance. Uh, I have actually in my life come across a very, very good definition of balance, which I'll share, um, which is very precise and which I work from, uh, and I've yet to find a problem with it. So this definition is that balance is no part or aspect or individual being um, overpowered. Uh, and no, basically that's it. No, no individual, no aspect overpowering any other aspect. So. In my body, I have a left and a right side. If, if I'm walking on a log and I balance this side too much, this muscle has overpowered this muscle and I fall over. So it's very simple. Um, we sometimes forget that when we're designing software uh, and that's what I'm gonna gradually focus more into here. So as you can see in this graphic, we have geometry and lots of patterns. And software really is many patterns together. And we have patterns in society too and within ourselves so we have to look at the patterns to identify whether or not they are in balance with one another. So I'm talking here about holistic balance, and so we look at the definition of holistic. And as you can see, holistic refers to a focus on the whole, meaning everything, uh, and the interconnectedness of its parts. Whereas non-holistic refers to um, the opposite of that, which means that we're dealing with um, a way of thinking which causes segregation, um, breaks things apart, and ultimately we re it results in us not understanding the full picture. Um, so, for example, a doctor that specializes in the knee does not necessarily understand everything that he needs to know to fully heal a person, whereas a holistic doctor will understand every part and therefore usually will be more successful. So, holistic balance is the ideal when designing systems from my perspective and experience in the sense that we need to have a, a total understanding of the whole system and to then bring it all into balance and quite often um, if you're working in a team of programmers as i have done or a big company it's quite common for the system to be so big that no one person understands the whole system uh, and as a result there's a loss of understanding regarding what needs to be done um, in terms of design and putting fixes in and so on. So if we're going to improve on that and to actually have holistic balance, um, there are some key points which are necessary. And these are points which people usually don't think so much about. Uh, they think about to some extent. Um, consistent awareness, which is the goal, which means that we have a consistent understanding of everything that's happening in the system um, to the best that we can. Um, no compromises, which means that we don't uh, deliberately do not quite as good as we could do for convenience. Um, and no denial, which means that we aren't blocking out certain things because it makes our life easier. Uh, we think it makes our life easier, but in the long term, it will cause us problems. Um, and equally, diligent attention to all details. So um, being open-minded and doing our best to understand as much as we can within the team and Overall. Okay, so when imbalance is present, <laughs> things become stress, dysfunctional, they break down. And in this example, that's when he discovers his superpower. So in reality, that isn't what always happens when things break. Um, you can learn a lot from imbalance and you can learn a lot from breaking things, and that's a good way to learn, but there's only so far you can take that. 
um, before it, it becomes a problem that ends your, your project. Um, so the idea, obviously, is to learn the easy way rather than the hard way. So the result of holistic balance, um, which is when you see the real benefits from it, is that everything simply flows effortlessly. Uh, and there's much less problems in the system, much less bugs, um, and this is really the goal of everyone who's making a system um, or, or coding a system, is to achieve something like this. But it's so rare that we don't usually have experience of it. Um, and often we're taught that effort is a good thing. To put more effort into something means that you are successful. But we forget that effortlessness also exists. Um, and effortlessness ultimately means everything's simply working well. Um, and when you're working like that, there's no effort. So it's a very different way of thinking to realize that you can actually change the way you work and get much better results through following simple principles of balance. So with a system like OWL, there are some points that we can balance in, in all the systems and really most software systems. Um, very basically, we have to balance the hardware the, the teams, the people, and the users, and the code that we're using can be balanced or imbalanced. Um, the user interfaces, that's a whole area of balance or imbalance again. Um, the system is interfacing with our mind, so it's very important that we achieve a degree of balance in what we're doing there. Um, and the structures of the site too, such as the page hierarchy, databases, everything needs to be balanced. And if one point is out of balance, it can affect the others. So, very quickly, um, within a computer, the different parts of the computer all need to be balanced with each other to facilitate the task that we want the computer to do. Uh, if we don't have enough memory, enough processing power, enough storage, then some aspect will fail in our system. Equally, the people need to be balanced, and this is the most complicated and challenging part of the process of balancing the system in the sense that you can't balance someone else, they have to want to be balanced and do it themselves. Um, however, if we all collectively understand how to balance ourselves, then we will have more success than if we don't understand. So from my perspective, to achieve that, there are some ideas that I have which I know work. If you're part of a team or part of a social network, simply having clear intentions and objectives, uh, which everyone understands, can go a long way to helping resolve balances and disputes and arguments which may not occur um, as a result of everyone understanding where they are collectively. Um, equally, access to clear information, if we're designing a software system which ultimately is running on information, uh, often we have corporate structures involved where there's a pyramid and the people higher up the structure have access to more information than the people below and they think that makes sense. but. In reality, since we're dealing with a creative endeavor, like a social network, usually, in my experience, anything creative is best, if possible, to have total transparency. So, as part of that as well, there's a need to make sure that everybody has access to the resources they need as part of the team, um, and training and skills and ability and so on. Um, and part of that also is ensuring that everyone is listened to, and there's no biases, this is a balanced situation and it's very rare in my experience in a corporation or, or a team, a big team, for everyone to have that level of balance and respect amongst each other. Um, so anything we can do to cultivate that will improve the overall result of our system and our software. So all of these points ultimately lead us to have an increased level of mental, psychological and physical health, which then goes in to help us improve what we're doing. So it's a, a cyclical process of improvement. We improve one part, that improves something else, and that helps us to improve other parts, and we just keep going. The opposite of that is the opposite, which is not good. Things gradually deteriorate. So, and just like we can balance our team, obviously when we're making policies and rules for our social network, as Ishmael was explaining, we're defining the way that people interact on our site, we're defining the way they think to a certain extent, and how they are living in their lives, although we may not think about that. So this is all, from my perspective, very important to understand if we're going to create a successful product. So from a programming perspective, I'll, I'll keep this short. We've already had developed the talk earlier on. Um, some of these points have been covered. Um, it's important to have code that can be reused, that can be understood from commenting, good commenting, 
um, and have an efficient use of logic in our use of code. Um, this will come through in everything that we do. So if we zoom into the code itself, functions can be too big, too short, too complicated. Um, it can result in an inefficient use of the computer um, and ultimately will affect the efficiency of our whole system. Well-written code that's balanced will result in high performance and poorly written code will result in low performance. User interfaces and page layout. When we're coming to design the pages of our site, this is the part where the minds of our users interact with our system. And it's really the one aspect which many users, that's all they will know about our system because that's all they see. Uh, so this is a whole topic which you could study for a week or a month or three years. Um, but there are certain principles which always are going to be relevant in good graphic design. So I'll just briefly describe some of the main points, which is to say that there's always a balance to be found between the amount of empty space you have on a page and the amount of content on the page. And every site might be slightly different. Um, it needs to be not too crowded um, for people's minds to be able to receive the information and understand the page. Equally, all the other elements on the page can be balanced in terms of graphic appearance, dark and light. Is the text easy to read for people with vision impairment? Um, there are many, many, many facets to this which may be a more focused in for, uh, to a designer. In other words, the designer needs to understand this perhaps more than administrators, but it helps for everybody to understand something about these topics when they're making decisions about their own website, um, and it will result in a high quality of site the more people understand these principles. Also, within all of this, every single one of these points I could talk about for two or three hours each, um, so I won't, but um, for, as an example, the size and style of fonts that we use on the page, some people might think that's not very important, but um, I mean, there's books written just on fonts and the design and style and the way the mind receives the fonts. So uh, I'll give a very quick tip, which is that fonts which are sans serif, which do not have the small inflection or forks, small marks that they have on, on serif fonts that are joined up, they're best for titles. Um, serif fonts are easy, uh, the mind finds it easier to read serif fonts uh, for longer flowing pieces of text. Okay, so the structures of the website, such as the page tree, um, all the way through to the database, all can be balanced or imbalanced. And there's a whole world of problems that could be hidden away in there that we're not so aware of. Um, there's no one answer that will always work necessarily for page structure, for example. Databases have certain rules which the developers can always learn and be aware of, such as normalization. Um, so really this comes down to a certain amount of trial and error and learning and research, like Ishmael said, to, do, to understand what your users are looking for um, and just practice. But the key point is to remember that you can always improve the balance and um, always to allow an agility in what you're doing, to remain agile, to change things if you need to, rather than deciding this is how it is and we're stuck with it. Also, as Ishmael uh, mentioned, there, there's the issue of whether our social site models the structure of the users who are expected to use the system. Are they going to be coming to the system and find that they're annoyed um, that the way that their group interacts is not reflected by the design and structures in the website? And again, there's always the important point, which I stress over and over again, to remember that balance comes from a holistic approach. So rather than focusing on perfecting one part of the system, it's very important to remember to look at and study how a change in one part of the system will affect the other parts, and ideally to have a system which is monitoring the performance, perhaps automatically, um, through uh, code analysis and uh, metric measurement, so that you can see quickly how your changes have affected the rest of the system. So, where do we need to balance in our system? Um, basically, it all begins in logic and the way that we translate our thinking into the technology and the code. So, logically, that brings us back to needing to balance us inside and the way that we think. And some people may be 
they don't want to think in sight, they don't want to think about these issues, they just want to think about computers. But ultimately, the only way you're going to improve really in what you're doing in the computer is to first improve your own balance. So a balanced mind, let's say, might make a version of this diagram which we can all look at and read and understand and quickly, in an efficient way, discuss it and improve on what we're doing. Uh, somebody who hasn't taken the time to consider balance in what they're doing might produce this. So, in part of my um, research and in my life, I've studied holistic health a lot, and that's a massive subject, which I can't talk about here for more than two minutes. Um, but if I had to take one lesson that I've learned about how to balance yourself, and therefore to balance your software, it's about balancing your brain, the two hemispheres together. So you may have one side of your brain that's dealing with logic, and that's very developed, and another side of your brain which is telling you to get up and walk away from the computer and do some exercise. If the two parts are talking together, then you have harmony, and you'll do what you need to do to be the best version you can be, and to create the best software you can create. So to summarize that, I would suggest some meditation and less internet. So if we create a new balance in a system, or in our lives, or in anything, um, there are certain principles which are important to understand. And the first one I've written here is to end reliance on assumption. And people like to assume things because it's easy and it's quick, and later on they will learn that those assumptions were wrong, and now they've added an extra two weeks onto their project. Uh, many people have a habit of deciding that they must have an answer, and that's better than having no answer. Whereas if you allow yourself to just accept you don't have the answer, the answer may come to you, rather than you working with the wrong answer for a while. Another very important point for programmers and technical people is to remind them to use their feelings, which is something that is like a foreign word to programmers, usually. Uh, we can actually feel when we are overstepping the balance points in our design. Um, we may, if we're very attuned to our intuition, uh, our feelings will let us know ultimately that what we're doing, the decision we're making, will annoy someone um, or it will cause us another problem. Um, most people have no idea that they have this ability within them. Um, also, stopping biases and making judgments, which again is part of guessing. Um, if we have a bias in our mind towards a kind of uh, an idea where we're willing to focus on that and block out another idea, such as a technology, such as L or another social network or another piece of technology, and we're obsessed with that piece of technology, we may well cause ourselves more problems than if we were more open minded. And since we're here talking about social businesses, in the social business con con uh, uh, context, I would hope that this next point doesn't apply so much, but in the corporate world where big money is involved, very often um, I found that imbalance is engineered deliberately into the system um, to attempt to make more money from people and to exploit the situation, um, whereas actually later on down the line it's discovered that that was a mistake and it's cost them money. So this comes back to integrity. It's all about integrity. We need to have a system that's based on integrity for the system to work, and programmers know that, because if they don't have integral code, the code doesn't work, and the computer will complain to them. Um, administrators and people that design sites and that run websites don't necessarily know this, uh, and haven't yet quite learned the value of holistic integrity, perhaps. So all of this comes back to a key point, which is that collectively, uh, in a group, and individually, the best possible result, in my experience, no matter what we're doing, uh, requires us to in actually intend to create balance. If we're not intending to create balance, then we won't create balance. It's that simple. Yeah. And again, another very important point in that is that we need to end denial. This is another topic that I could talk for a week about. Um, it's quite complicated, but if you were to sum, if you were to make it simple, it means you're not lying, you're not lying to yourself, you're not cheating, you're not trying to make things look better than they are. You're just being honest, and therefore problems can be solved quickly and effectively. So you don't have um, marketing teams promising things that the developing development team can't deliver, 
and everyone is happy uh, as a result. So one observation that I made um, about social software is that um, there's always a degree of control and freedom involved in any social interaction. And when we're creating rules uh, or adding features, that will affect the way the users interact as a group and uh, with the website. So there are some principles involved there which it's good to understand. So as you can see, when rules and features place limits on the users, that has the potential to create imbalance in their experience and they will fairly quickly cause imbalance in the life of the administration team and the coders by complaining and shouting. So equally, when features remove limits from the users, that has the potential to create imbalance in the system in the sense that more activity will probably happen on the website. So you may need more hardware um, resources to support that. And that may then equally then affect the users, which may then cause further imbalance in the admin team. From my perspective, a good approach to solve this problem is to take a deep breath, and instead of jumping in and making a new feature, a new decision, a new rule, is to remember to look at every decision and to see whether our feature is going to affect the user in a way which brings our system in or out of balance. And particularly with no um, personal bias being involved because you like a particular thing, even though it's causing loads of problems, but it must be in there because you say so. I had quite a longer talk than this, but I cut it down um, because of the need to translate the text. Um, I didn't think I'd get to this example, but I have, so we, I'm going to briefly talk about Google+. Plus. So I picked this example because it's a well-known website and probably most people have used it. Um, I could have equally chosen Facebook or any other big well-known social network. I also picked this example because it's the one that I found the most annoying in my entire time using social networks. So hopefully this will demonstrate some of what I'm talking about. So YouTube and Google Plus have an anti-spam function which is intended to do what they can to increase the quality of the comments on Google and YouTube. Um, it's I wrote, allegedly intended to limit the ability of users to flood comments, threads with adverts and inappropriate messages because <coughs> that is the intended function of an anti-spam uh, feature on a website. Um, so, but as we'll see, in reality, there are quite a few problems with it. Um, and just to describe some of the aspects, as I've been under, able to understand it, not working for Google, um, it prevents the posting of a URL in a first comment, for example. Uh, that may be only for users who have already been marked as potential troublemaker. Uh, in my experience, also as somebody apparently marked as a troublemaker um, on Google+, uh, it prevents the posts, sharing of posts to more than, say, two communities um, in Google every few hours. The biggest problem with this is that the system does not tell the user that their posts are being blocked. So the poster thinks that everyone is seeing their posts, but they aren't. So, from my experience and the experience of many other people, um, I'm sure you can guess, the results of this uh, is that we feel overpowered um, since we can't do what we think we're meant to be doing on the network. Um, users often, including uh, many people in the forums for Google, uh, have lost trust in Google as a result of this and in the system um, because they feel that they're being arbitrarily censored. Um, and logically, the result of that is that many of them have left those networks to go looking for alternatives. And because there is a limitation of, of the communication within the system, the, value, the overall value for the users is decreased. And as far as I can tell, after two years of this having been raised in the Google support forums, and there's a 220 post thread in there about this topic with all manner of arguments and shouts and complaints, um, the only response I could find in there from Google experts was, yes, it needs to be fixed. <laughs> so in all of that time, there's been zero improvement to the system that I can tell. Um, and that has, has not, they haven't taken the opportunity to cultivate a sense of good faith with the users who are having this problem. So how, from my perspective, some ideas that I would suggest in that situation um, is fairly obvious, really. But from a technical perspective, they simply need to implement a method of informing the users 
the, their posts are being blocked and the rest of the world can't see these posts, um, which would create a balance in the relationship between the system and the users. Um, equally, following on from that, there's another way to, to create a sense of respect and balance there, which is to make it clear what is and is not considered spam, so that the people who are at least being blocked understand why they've been blocked. This policy may well exist, but for the average user, it's not <laughs> visible to them. Um, so if they do find out they're being blocked, they probably still don't know why. And the last point there really is just my suggestion to, and this, this goes through most computing systems, usually there's an intention, in, whether accidentally or not, to control people for the protection of the system without enough consideration being given to the free expression of the people and their need to be and express through the system, which is very important, especially for social systems, where it's a lot about communication and interaction. So this was a little bit of a philosophical talk and hopefully, from my perspective, I'd like to think that this kind of thinking can improve the internet for me and for everyone else. Um, if these types of ideas proliferate a little bit more, um, maybe our lives will be a little bit happier and maybe we'll be able to communicate a little bit better. So thank you, thank you for having me and if everyone, anyone wants to ask me questions or have an argument with me, I'll be here for two days or so. Okay.